Well, nobody don't seem to know the origin of the Pat Sobios. We claim that it goes back, oh, 4,000 years, and that's a darn long time, by isn't it? 4,000 years. And then there's another story, is that uh, in the year 1341, the majority of the men were away fighting, and some Danish king or Danish fleet supposed to have tried to land at Padstow. And the women went out and dressed up in this weird looking thing, got out on, out on Stepper Point, and uh, they thought that it was the Satanic Majesty himself, and they all got to their boats and fled, you see. That's one yarn. But what we claim that goes back further than that. This is Colonel Beach speaking, and I've carried it for 48 years, and the family, 120 years, I've heard my mother say, and my brothers will stand in front of me now, and as I follow, I follow all the family right through, and when I'm gone west, my son will keep May Day up, will keep May Day forever and ever. And I took that horse from the Golden Lion, 10 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the evening without a break. But I'm very sorry to say I can't do it now. But all the same, I got my sons here who follow their father's footsteps. Well, when we hear Dickie Prender's drum, we sort of, well, we feel that we must be at the Golden Lion and follow the Arbyoffs, you see? It's uh, sort of something which builds up inside of you and you don't feel content until you are with the with the arse. And, uh, not only that, that doesn't apply only to the the uh, members of the party, it applies, I, I think, to the whole of the original pastel families. Uh, in the fact that uh, rain or fine or whatever happens, we, we see them out here year after year, the same faces, and they almost got their own little place to stand. And then, well, you, you can't keep them away. You know, uh, you know, with a double barrel gun sort of, there they are, you, you know they're going to be there, it's sort of a, more or less a fixture on May Day morning. About 80 years ago, the people, there were a number of people in Padstow who thought that they knew best. And they used every means possible to prevent the Arias coming out. Uh, they thought if they could only do it for one year, then it could be stopped altogether. Uh, you see, just at that time, it, it, the Arias party had got somewhat disreputable. <laughs> Perhaps there was too much drunkenness. Uh, it had certainly got very rough. Uh, Patchta was different then from what it is now. There was this faithful Ben who were determined, despite all the threats and um, bribery and every uh, persuasion imaginable, they still persisted that they would come out, and they did. And I think we should be very grateful now for their faithfulness in having preserved for us this very ancient custom, which undoubtedly is one of the oldest of its kind in Great Britain. 11 o'clock is 11 o'clock, you see. And when it comes to 11 o'clock, they must go out. And Gran says they can have no more beer after 11 o'clock. What they had before, and well, we are officially open unofficially and officially open all day long. <laughs> well, that's that's Cornish, you see. I, I let them have a pint before they go out, and I let them have two when they come back. <laughs> Is that right, buddy? That's right. That's right. Officially and unofficially, we are. <laughs>
soon as we hear the town clock strike the hour of midnight, our Aussie choir, as we term them, start singing the night song. Unite and unite, and let us all unite, for summer is a coming today, and whither we are going, we will all unite in the merry morning of May. Then it's, I warn you young men, everyone, for summer is a coming today, to go into the greenwood, fetch the May home in the merry morning of May. Now our next verse concerns our dear old landlady here, Mrs. Cooch. Rise up, Mrs. Cooch, I know you well and fine, for summer is a come unto day. You have a shilling in your purse, I wish it was in mine, in the merry morning of May. And if you look out of the windows on May the 1st, you'll see Padstow outside of the garden. And when I say Padstow, I mean Padstow. Padstow, Padstonians. Well, the 1st of May, when uh, 1st of May, sir, I come out. I come out. And off I go again and run, run right down for the street after the young lady, you know. And I take them inside us, you see. Take them inside us. Oh, they really love it. I tuck you down and all I got to do is just put my arms around them. But I got inside of it, I only just put my hand down, you know, around and around. And then they let it just for the tickle them under the ribs, you see. And, right, I don't want really to keep them there one minute, and I toss us up again, and after someone else. And they are, and then the song go, in the merry morning May. Welcome. I must say a word of thanks to our squire, Mr. John Pudo Broon, for supplying us with all this lovely greenery, which he does do every year from his plantation. So, all together, give three hearty cheers for Mac and the old horse. We are! We are! Summer is in power and children will come and pour unto your house before another year in the merry morning A dance today for the first time. Yes. Uh, but I understand it, it's different now to, to, to what it used to be. Oh, yes. It, well, we used to all go round, you know, and we used to dance just like the, the we young people, you know. We used to dance like the children dance now. But we weren't dressed in white hands. We were just in our ordinary clothes, you see. And then they used to stand like a teach public house, you see. We didn't have anything to drink but the bandage, you see. And then they used to say, now then, take your partners, you know. And then we used to all dance round. Then they'd, they'd play one or two dances, and then the band would have a drink, and then we should go marching on, you know, and just follow them and dance to the garland too, you see. Yeah. But this idea of the, of the Queen being a woman, that's a new thing, isn't it? Yes, only last year. Mm. Yes, it's, a, it's always been a, a man before, but she's a... Of course, she's a good rider. She has a horse mm. of her own. Just sing those, those, that little bit again. I love that. I love the rhyme. I haven't heard that before. Which the, one? The rhyme for the for the uh, t for the dance. Uh, about Braddy. Yes. I don't know, no, I don't know what there is in Braddy. An old cow's head and a piece of bread and a pudding baked in a lantern. If that'd been wed as long as me, pudding had never been wanted. And then he could sing la 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 la. 
should be donated. They always thought by the Cornish miners coming up here and uh, starting, of course, these uh, about the king and the oak tree and all the rest of it. Uh, they add that to it, you know, but the two and the dancing is practically the same. The ringers, as a rule, there used to be about 16 of them, and they all always danced, the old ones and the young, and then the girls threw in behind, and they were in right possession, and did them all his dance, from pub to pub. They used to uh, go around and dance you know, stuff and pick out. Well, when it uh, when we'd been like finished over, it used to they always used to take the garland flowers in the church, and there used to be men at the top of the steeple with a rope, and they, they had a pulley, and they pulled it up to the top. Well, then when when we done that, there wasn't a, a maypole dance. We used to go and have a dance in one of the hotels in one of the rooms. You're not near the you know, they had a room that uh, wasn't connected much with the public house, and go and have a dance there. But now, they have a dance and it's half a crown. So, um, but see the people dance, that'll have been, oh, it'll be about 40 years now, yes. I think it was introduced about 40 years ago, yes, the maypole dancing, yes, yes. Yes, yes, and they dance it very nicely, you know. Mm. It's, very, it's a, really a better, a better finish off, you know, that, than, uh, than what it was in the olden days, I think. It's very nice to see the children tripping around in the market square, and they do it very nicely. Of course, the garland's been generations, generations, you know. Yes. We had a bit of fun with the with the vicar, he pulled it off, you know, one time, and did him a lot of harm. Pulled it, he would have it taken off the steeple, you know. He said he'd had a vision, so I don't know what. However, he seems all right now, but he's going in two or three weeks now. It is a pity when old customs like that, you see, it upset the old people, you see. And he did a lot, it did a lot of harm to the church. A lot of people wouldn't go. There's one person, she'd always been interested in, in it, and uh, during the war, it would have um, it would have gone down. And uh, you see, if it once, if you don't have it every year, and you won't stay, you couldn't go through the streets again. Well, her husband, one year when the war was so very bad, all as all as was done, the lady and the the king and the queen walked through the village with the garland, and there was neither ban nor anything, just to keep it to keep it so as it, it could go on after years. Well, the crown is uh, the head of the garland. It's the bunch of the key. And it fits exactly on the top, made of uh, garden flowers. And uh, it's built up of a stick about 15 inches long, and there's a bunch of oak on the top and you put different colours of flowers so they blend and when it's finished it fits in the top it's all in the, in the, in the, in the garland top the beehive shape and it fits in the top and that's the finishing touch <laughs> Thank you.
they'd, about a fortnight before Whitson, they used to come in the elephant yard and dance and practice for, for the next fortnight, see? And dance every, every night, and then right up to the Saturday night before Whitson. If it were wet, they'd dance in the tap room. The Saturday night before Whitson, they'd have a real beano. That's true, they'd have plenty of dancing and plenty of help makes to go and come in with them. This young man much to the side of me now, Brannan, was the man that would start collecting on the Saturday night, <laughs> preparing for Saturday Monday morning. Then we come to Monday morning, see that's where we go to. Come Monday morning, they'd start then at eight o'clock at our place, half a pint of beer they'd have, no more, nothing whatsoever. And then put a bit in the box, ready for starting. So I used to put them a bit in as well and start them off. Come on, wake up, Mark. Hey, grab him up, Harry. That's it. Come down with the old horse buses. <coughs> and there was a crowd outside, bigger, bigger than what it is today, ever so much bigger. And they was always dancing and going on, and the tunes were, the dancing was real. If they did, wasn't it doing, doing it real, the old people, the old dancers, which me, me, grand, me father-in-law was an old dancer, and he'd say, not doing it right, you know, Tom? No, come on, my lads, pick them up, keep those ankies up in the air, and put some life in it, or you won't get anything at night. And yourself, the cake bearer, who else would there be now? And the fool. And the coat carrier. What's, what, what's the fool do then? Well, we dance with the bearer, dance around, keeps them all alive. See? The fool, a merry man is he, with ever ready wit, with his elastic limbs as nimble every bit. In comic hat and gossoon dress. And a horse's bladder strung to a short stout staff tied on with a leather thong. Bells on his shoulders, bells round his knees. They said he was the perfect fool, one and all agrees. His caddy hat he passes through, in and out the crowd. On every penny he does get, I'm sure he's mighty proud. If he tires them with his chatter patter, the money helps the box to fill, so what matter? All the children laugh and clap at his tricks as acrobat. But if they don't precaution take, they taste his blood and not the cake. Our dancers six. All well-trained men must be. Pick from the village best you see. With legs as straight as a poplar tree, they clap all together and bend the knee. In well-trimmed bowler hats, ribbons broad and bright, white pocket anarchists, all dressed in white. Power fiddler too, let me tell you, the old tunes he knows quite well and plays them on his old old fiddle without each.
Robin Hood was the king of the forest. He's the king, he's a free man that day, supposed to be, by law, the like of years ago. He, he is the jester, like, and he passes all these jokes and all this, and if people who follow it, I wish I'd have been educated, as I could uh, explain more than what I really can do now. But it's what they call the um, rutting season, September, of the, the reindeers. If you was to walk in, say, Baggett's Park, September, this month, your life wouldn't be worth living for, would it? amongst the reindeers. In my mind, it seems to follow this uh, dance through. It seems as if they used to dress up in the skins of the animals on this month to take advantage of, of their original state of living with these uh, reindeers and that. I think they tried to imitate sort of thing. That's my mind. Of course, it may be wrong, but I don't think it is. If I was educated, I study science, I study nature. But to follow the nature through, I walk many miles. And I walk all around Bagot Spark, and I see these things happen. I see the stag, the big one, standing bold and brave as much as say come any farther sort of thing, you know and it's nature come true for me to dance this uh, day on this date that it's the breeding season of the tears and all that they can't take it off my mind or i don't care how, how much educated it is i still have my um, ideal of life and nature and you can't beat nature no one on this earth can beat nature My dad, my only father, never mind about my granddad and my great granddad, they used to have three days of it while I've been a boy. And we used to dance uh, the round we go today. We used to dance that on the Monday, right round Blyfield Hall and all round Anderson that way. On the second day, on the Tuesday, we used to go or cross Yoxall and round from Amstel River and way home. The third day we used to go the Burton Way to Neewood Forest and Newbury and all that way. But I can't believe that uh, people are talking now about younger than me that it's never been out of the village, but I say it has and no one will ever tell me otherwise. It is a thing that they dance for the poor and the needy those days. And it got to be a, not a, a dance for the poor of the village, but a dance in history, just to bring the history of the village back. Not for the poor of the village, but for the men that was doing it. To upkeep the horns and the clothing, pay their expenses. I do it today. I don't do it for nothing. I've got to pay the lads that are with me, the men that are with me, I've got to pay them their wages. If I fail to collect the same, I'm losing, we're all losing a day's wage to do it. If I fail to pay them lads, they wouldn't come in. Go.
and strike a light for in this house tonight there's going to be a dreadful fight between King George and Black Prince and we all hope King George will win but whether he may win, lose, stand, fight or fall he'll do his best to please you all if you don't believe these words I say step in King George and clear the way In comes I King George the champion bold I won ten thousand pound in gold it was I who fought the fiery dragon and brought him to the slaughter. And by these means I won the king of Egypt's daughter. I've travelled the whole world round and round, but not a man of my equal have I found. If you don't believe these words I say, step in, Black Prince, and clear the way. In comes I, Black Prince of Paradise, born of high renown. This night I've come to take King George's life and courage down. If that be he that standeth there, that slew my master, son and heir, if that be he of royal blood, I'll make it flow like Noah's flood. Mind what thou sayest. What I say I mean. Stand back, thou black Morocco dog, or by my sword thou'll die. I'll pierce thy body full of holes and make thy buttons fly. How canst thou pierce my body full of holes and make my buttons fly, when my body is made of iron, my head and sword of steel, my fingers and toes are double-jointed, I'll challenge thee to yield. Prepare. Oh. oh, King George, King George, what hast thou done? Thou killed and slain my only son, my only heir. See how he lies jet and bleeding there. Well, Mary, he challenged me to fight. Better to fight than to die. Five pounds for a doctor, ten for a quack. If you don't believe these words I say, step in, quack doctor, and clear the way. Well, for this one, I've just all them jobs been going on ever since I can remember. I've been mixed up with them from, well, actually taking part in about 32 years. My grandfather did it, my father did it, my uncles have done it, and... It, I've seen in an old book where my great-great-grandfather actually drunk his souling cap, which was the last one that saw him up. That was the last a pint of gin and rum. And you could go on talking forever about this, but there's a lot of people who can't understand it because it's really our religion. We believe in souling. We believe in ghosts because we're supposed to be ghosts. <laughs> Sometimes there's not many of us a real attendance at church because I think our belief is more sentimental and private and we only turn out on All Hallows Eve. There's a younger gang in Antibus, the younger generation, and we were, there's one or two of the old ones that packed up, in fact they've died, sorry to say, and we thought we'd better have another gang going to keep the tradition going. So we started this youth club, the, two, the boys that was at the youth club then, which are grown up men now, and uh, they're in the senior gang. Well, my name is Mr. Collins, uh, Reg, Reginald Collins. Uh, I'm a farmer's son, and uh, I've been in the soul caking for about five years. As Mr. Isherwood has just told you, I was one of the 
younger generation as he calls it. We started through the youth club. Of course we had to go to the old gang to for a bit of help. They gave us quite a lot of clothes for the job and quite a lot of information. But anyway, my part is I, I'm the horse driver and I come in with the horse at the end of the play and, uh, and this horse, it is uh, a real horse's skull with just one leg attached to it and uh, it is believed to be over a hundred years old. And uh, at one time, there used to be quite a lot of gangs. There used to be a gang for each village, a gang of soul takers. And the, the horse's head used to be the main thing. If they had no horse's head, they couldn't turn out. And they used to, if they used to meet, they used to fight and smash one another's horse's heads up so, that, so as to stop the other gang going out. Whoa, whoa, lad, whoa, 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 whoa,
Five pound for a doctor. Ten pound if he stays away. In comes I, the doctor. What can you cure? Me? I can cure. Ipsy pipsy, palsy gout, pains within and pains without. Heal the sick, the blind, the lame, and bring the dead to life again. Can you cure this man? I can. Take hold of this bottle of whiff waff while I feel his pulse. His heart beats 15 times to the tick of my watch once. I must give him a drop out of this old bottle, down his old throttle, and one of my simple pimple pills. That'll cure him. This man's not dead, he's in a trance. Rise up, Jack, and let's all dance. <laughs> Incline for listing. Time away will swiftly pass. You shall have all kinds of liquor. Him, I yet to shed a tear. I just mean to let him know. I'll get another sweetheart, and along with him we'll go. Now I'm a foreign traveller. I travel our land and sea. But all I want is an handsome <coughs> wife to bear me company. Now if I could win her love, and I could gain her vow, I'd sit no more content while others follow the plough. Now, dear, are we going to give him a bit of a strumpt? Yes, I think so. <laughs> but I'm a bit hoarse. Oh, yes, yes Dee Dee. <laughs> well, we'll try one. Sure. I used to court a charming girl, the fairest in the land. Her name was Sally Tompkins, I'll never to understand. I love that pretty girl of mine, she had a whining way. I'll squeeze her oh immensely, and then told me she would say. Yo, no, we're only courting, I'm sure you can forget. You cannot claim me as your own, we are not married yet. If you really love me, then don't make love so free. But do give all that tickling me and tormenting me. I uh, took my lover for a walk, as most lovers do. <coughs> and as we toddled side by side, I begged that she'd be true. Oh, when we came beneath the shade of an overhanging tree, I put my arm around her neck, and then she says to me, You're nowhere only courting, you cannot, show sure you can't. You cannot claim me as your own, we are not married yet. If you really love me, then don't make love so free. But do give over to the little and tormenting me. Madam, I have gold and silver. Madam, I have house and land. Madam, I have rings and jewels. All for you, at your command. What care I for your houses and land? What care I for your rings and jewels? All I want is a handsome man. A handsome man will not maintain you. Beauty, it will fade away. Like a rose that blooms in summer and in winter will decay. There you are, Tommy. Long I have sought thee. Now I have caught thee. Here, Tommy, take thy child. The bairn, Jen. The bairn, Jen. Why, it's not a bit like me. Oh, yes, it is. Look at its eyes, nose and chin. Why, it's more like you than ever. It's got your grin. It's not mine, it's not mine. Take it to the overseers. And now our play is ended, and our tomfool is gone. We'll make it now our business to follow him along. We're not the London actors, as I have told you before. We've done the very best we can, and best can do no more. So, good mistress and good master, as you sit by the fire, remember us poor plough lads who plough the muck and mire. For the muck it is so nasty, the mire it is so strong. So remember us poor plough lads as we go trudging on. <laughs> Thank you.
called kaitels. You, you don't know what a kaitel is, do you? It's a kind of a, a cloth coat. And they're stitched on these kaitels, long pieces of newspaper or wallpaper or anything. They cut them about so wide and so long, and they stitched them on, they were all hanging down. On the sleeves and all over, the, uh, all the uh, men folks. And then old Tosspots had an old overcoat on with a rope tied round the back. And a big hump stuck up here, you see. And uh, its face was black. Well, they all had black faces, every one of them. And uh, Molly Brown Baggs was a, well, she was a regular old ragamuffin look sort of, sort of a body. And when she, when they said, and the next that comes on is old Molly Brown Baggs, she had a, a potato masher in her hand and she, she banged away at the old man's hump, you see, all the way around. <coughs> That's a, uh, now they were dressed. Well, they used to get quite a lot of eggs and bacon and all sorts of things they got given. Oh yes, I went round with them. And the girls would go up one side of the dale and the boys the other side of the dale to all the farmhouses. And when we'd finished our face again song, we would say, would you like a comic song? And then of course, one or two of us would give them a comic song, you see, and they In liked that. comes I, that never come yet. My lal head, my dirt wit. If me wit be ever so small, me and me Pompey and we'll conquer them all. So the next that comes in is a toss spot, you see. He's a valiant old fellow in every degree. He's a hump on his back and he wears a big stare. And all his delight is in drinking mulled ale. Oh, hooray, oh, hooray, oh, hooray, Larry Day. In comes I, old Molly Maskit, under my arm I carry my basket. Into my pocket I pop my cash and thinks myself a jolly old lass. So the next that comes in is old Bessie from Box. Um, 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 her money, she goes in old rags. She's plenty of money and plenty in store. She's come a pace again and hopes to get more. All the rain, all the rain. In steps I, King George, King George it is my name. My sword and dagger by my side, I hope to win the game. The game, sir, the game, sir, it's not in all thy power. I'd cut thee and I'd slice thee in less than half an hour. What is this thou sayest? What I say I mean to do. Pull out thy purse and pay. Before I pull out my purse and pay, I'd pull out my sword and fight my way. My head is made of metal brass, my body is made of steel. <coughs> my hands are nails and knuckle bone, I challenge thee to feel. <coughs> oh George, oh George, what hast thou done? Thou's gone and slain mine only son. Mine only son, mine only heir, how canst thou see him bleeding there? He challenged me to fight, so why should I deny? I'll let him know King George was born to conquer or to die. I'll give five pounds for a doctor, I'll give ten pounds for a doctor, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five pounds for a doctor. Doctor, doctor, <coughs> here am I. How came you to be a doctor? By my travels. How far have you travelled? Italy, Sicily, France and Spain, all round England and back again. Is that all, sir? No, from the top of the Antalyai Ocean, 60 degrees below the bottom, where are so houses made of snow, pancakes for slates, black puddings for nails, and even roasted pigs running up and down the streets, with knives and forks stuck in their cheeks, crying, eat me. Eat me, for such a living man as I should never die. Is that all, sir? No, from my grandmother's bedside to the corner cupboard, where I got so much bread and cheese, it makes me look so bulky and fat. I wasn't talking about fat. Neither was I. What were you talking about? About what I can cure. What can you cure? The ickety pickety plague within, the plague without. If there's nineteen devils in this man, I'll sure cast twenty out. And I've got a little bottle in me inside, outside, right side, left side, waistcoat pocket, 
which my grandmother gave me when I left Spain. This will surely bring this dead man to life again. Here, Jack, take a little of my nip-nap. Let it run down my tip-tap. Rise up and fight King George again. Oh, my back. What is the matter with thy back? My back, it is broken. My heart is confounded. Driven into seven senses, four score, which never saw the light of old England before. Take him away, Doctor. Take him away. So, ladies and gentlemen that sit by the fire, put your hands in your pockets. That's all we desire. Put your hands in your pockets and pull out your purse and give us a trifle. You'll not be much worse. Hooray! Oh, master and mistress, our wassail begins. Pray open your doors and let us come in with our wassail. Wassail, wassail, wassail. And joy comes with our jolly wassail. Oh, master and mistress, sitting down by the fire, why we poor wassail boys are travelling the mire with our wassail, 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 wassail. And joy comes with our jolly wassail. Good master and mistress, sitting down at your ease, put your hands in your pockets and give what you please to our wassail, 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 wassail. And joy comes with our jolly wassail. Good master and mistress, now can you forbear? Come fill up our bowl with cider and beer for our wassail, 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 wassail. And joy comes with our jolly wassail. We hope that your apples will prosper and bear and bring forth good cider for this time next year for our wassail, 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 wassail. And joy comes with our jolly wassail. We hope that your barley will prosper and grow and bring forth good beer for you to bestow for our wassail, 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 wassail. And joy comes with our jolly wassail. I think there was one, two, three, four, there was four farms in my little village of Orkham when my young boy days, where they used to go. Well, they'd go up in the orchard and they'd assemble around a, well, a certain tree, and then they'd call on the songster, or you'd call him a songster if you like, they would sing the old Wessel song. And uh, after that uh, was done, the first thing they used to do, well, they, all, well, uh, they used to have a bucket of cider, in the main place, perhaps or, or the farmer or his wife would like to do it, they toast some bread, you see, and put it in the tub with a cider, in the bucket with a cider. And then they'd take the toast out of the bucket and put it in the, we used to call it in the fork of the apple tree, for the robins. And that would keep the robins alive in the winter, you see, to eat up the grub in the spring of the year when they come to life. That was the uh, meaning of putting this year toast in the trees. <laughs> and, well, then they have a, you know, the West Isle song. 
And then, you know, at the end, uh, when, you know, when they said they would go to the ray and fire off the guns, well, then they settled down to a half hour sing song. Drink, cider, as much as they like, go round and round and round and round until they, until they move on to another farm. I heard the old men say, you know, they hear the guns go off. Oh, they moved up higher town, that was higher town of mining. Bratton Court, that was a neighboring little ways out from, you know, through the parks and way on there. And you could hear the guns going off, you see, mm. when it was gone quiet like. Mm. And, uh, but that's what it's done more than what it is today. Mm. Oh, it is what they call the old 12 Eve. So there's Christmas Day, you see. Old Christmas Day is the 6th. And it's 12 days after Old Christmas Day. So that would be the 17th Eve of January. Mm-hmm. That's, that's when Wesail night is. What was the real meaning of, of Wesail? And what was the point of, of, of shooting off? Well, the, the, the old point is it, it drive away the evil spirits from, from the trees. And then we should have a good crop of apples. That was the meaning of West Island, you see. But do you think it's a lot of nonsense? Well, <laughs> personally I do, but uh, I had a daughter of mine, I was going out one, we was going to West Island, and I said the same thing what I've said now. And she says, Father, she says, you go on and do it. She says, because us youngsters, in years to come, won't know what your old time entertainment was and the old traditions and rights and wrongs and traditions to carry it on. And that sunk in me rather deep and while well, I know myself for, for someone's future entertainment and benefit, I know myself all them hang too and, and that's how they sort of draws me into this here. Oh, Lily, white Lily, oh, Lily, white pin, please to come down and let us all in. Oh, Lily, white Lily, oh, Lily, white smock, please to come down and shut back the lock. Oh, Mrs. and Master, oh, now if you please, please to bring forth the white loaf and cheese, for it's our was sad. Jolly was sad, jolly go wet, our jolly was sad. So well they might blow, so well they might bear, that we may have apples and cider this year. For the ringles and the jingles and the tenor of our song goes merrily, merrily, merrily. And the tenor of our song goes merrily. Apples, capples, grebus, or bagels, little eat me under the stairs. Hip, hip, hooray. Oh, then they used to fire the gun up in the apple tree to drive the evil spirits out the tree. And they even used to hang a little bit of toss in the limbs for the rubbing to come and pick. That was the end. And then we used to have the cider to drink up. And this was January the 17th? January the 17th. Why January the 17th? Oh, that was the, oh, that was the old custom day. The day when they used to call the Old West Sailing. And used to sing songs. All the old men used to sing songs. And p- play the concertina or the accordion. And dance. And have a real, real good night. Real good night.